Hello, thank you for purchasing Cam Anim 3D, our extensive collection of diverse camera movement. It already helped lots of artists increase production values and enhance their creation with stunning camera work. In this tutorial, I will guide you step by step how to use Cam Anim 3D. When you bought it, you will receive three Blender files single movement animations sequenced movements animation and insta real camera animations the number at the end refers to updates of new templates that i'm constantly adding quick overview on cam anim 3d files i highly recommend appending actions from these files to your project which i will show you in a minute but for now let's see how these files are made and focus on the user interface because it is set up in a way that works best for playing with camera animations. On the left we have a view from the camera. We can modify pass apart out alpha even more to only see the final image. If you want to change the resolution set up proper dimensions here. Most common frame rate for Instagram and TikTok videos is 30, so I recommend to set it so. Then we have a 3D viewport where we can play with a Dolly Camera Rig. Press Tab to go into pose mode and then you can manipulate all of its controllers. There is a camera controller that lets you position camera in the 3D space. There is an offset controller. I often use it for rolling the camera. We have a aim controller. Camera is following it constantly. And there is a root controller, which is essentially parent of all controllers. I often use it to make arcs. On the right panel we can animate the focal length of our camera and turn on depth of field as you can see here. Then here is the timeline, we have buttons to play our animation and set up range. And here it's an action editor when we can browse through actions like animations for our Dolly camera rig. Also we can see whole list of this animation in the upper right corner. Let's pick our first animation. Orbit clockwise vehicle. All animations comes with three variants for a vehicle, character and object. There are proxy targets to visualize camera movements better. I will show you later how to modify them if your project has different dimensions. Also, keep in mind how these targets are located. They are in the center of a scene facing minus y direction. You should see front of your object when you press 1 on your numpad. Let's jump to the first example. I have a chair model that I download from Blender Kit in a simple studio setup and why I want to use my single camera movements animation. So let's first check out if it's located correctly and it is in the center of the scene and after I pressed one on my numpad I see front of it. First of all enable Dolly camera rig in preferences. Just type here rig 
and select cam add camera rigs. Now press Shift A and add dolly camera rig to your scene. Now I will set up user interface similar as in my original file. So here I want to have my view from the camera without gizmos and overlays. I go into camera view by pressing 0 on my numpad and I will disable gizmos and overlays and I want to have it. I want to see viewport shading. And here I will jump into pose mode to modify it position of the camera just to see the chair in my camera view. I will snap the aim controller to be at the cursor and I will slightly rise it up. Let's assume that I'm going to publish it on Instagram, so change the resolution here. and set and switch to 30 fps on the bottom i want to make room for action editor now go to file append and navigate where you have files from CamAnim 3D. Go to Actions. Since we have a chair, the object variant will be the best match. So filter animation by typing object. Make sure to check fake user if you want these actions to stay in your file when you close it down. And now you have all the animations in your file. Remember to first select your dolly camera rig and then browse through animations in Action Editor. You can check how many frames they have when go to pose mode and select all the controllers and as you see it has 100 frames. So we can set up our range accordingly. Example 2. Now I have a car model that I download from Sketchfab in a simple dome setup with HDRI lighting. I did also set up my user interface as in a first example. I've appended actions from InstaReel pack and filtered them by vehicle. Now you have all animations in your file and you can browse it in Action Editor. If you want to preview it with sound in Blender, copy link of original template, look in your search engine for something like Instagram Downloader and get this video file into Blender. We need to make some extra space at the bottom for video sequencer to add it there. I recommend deleting the strip video, it causes trouble when rendering and we only need sound. Blender's animations are by default rendered as a sequence of perfectly still images, while great for stop motion and time lapses this is unrealistic, since fast-moving objects do appear to be blurred in the direction of motion. 
Motion blur is calculated from previous and next frame, so in places with hard cuts where camera teleports to the new position, surrounding frames are very different. That can cause weird artifacts also known as the ghosting effects. The solution is that you can insert keyframes to offset the shutter's time interval and change the motion blur trails. At the last frame of the shot, you need to set it to end of frame so the shutter close at the current frame and at the beginning it needs to be set to start on frame. The easiest way to find those places where it needs to be done is by looking for frames with keyframes for all Dolly Camera Rig controllers. You can jump through keyframes by up and down arrows. In frame 90 and 100 I am not adding keyframes because it is just a change in direction of movement. Another method I occasionally use is to disable motion blur in Blender at all and add it later during post-production in DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro or After Effects. In DaVinci you just need to add two nodes, optical flow and vector motion blur and the results are quite satisfying and enough for some projects. You can modify the timing of animations by scaling up keyframes. In this example we want this showcase to be half of the speed. Make a duplicate of original animation so you can always get back if you mess something up. Then go to pose mode and select all the controllers. Put your playhead on the first keyframe and press S for scale and 2 to make it longer. Modify the range to fit the new duration. If your model has different dimensions, for example, it's not a chair, but a laptop, once again made a duplicate of your animation. As you can see, aim controller has only one keyframe at the beginning, so you can easily modify it and the same goes with camera controller. In this example there is a vehicle model with uh, much larger dimension. As you can see, the camera is colliding with our objects, so we need to fix it. Always start by making duplicate of your current action. The easiest way to make all the necessary modification in graph editor, you can activate it by pressing Ctrl and Tab. Change the position of our root controller by offsetting it in a Y direction. Also we need to 
change the location in the X direction. And we need to slightly raise up the aim controller. And I also like to get my camera further away from the object. As you can see in this shot we need to take our root controller further away in the Y direction. In this shot we want our tire to be in the center, so let's, mo let's move the root controller also in the Y direction. Blender has renamed one of the controllers in built-in Dolly Camera Rig from Camera Offset to Camera Offset with the O now capitalized. At the moment of recording this tutorial all of my animations are made in Blender 3.6 so if you append action to Blender 4.2 there will be issues with camera offset controller and quick fix for now is to rename the controller to start with the small letter O in the future I will for sure switch to more modern version of Blender so the problem will be gone If you have any additional questions, feel free to send me an email or contact me via Instagram. Also, if you want custom work, we can discuss it over there.